The Living with Cancer Patient Reported Outcomes tool is a survey that involves four different domains of personhood. So we look at performance status, burden, pain, and depression. We ask questions along a Likert scale, you know, sometimes, always, never. And then the patients individually weight their responses in terms of how each of those modalities impacts their life, a little, a lot. So they may always feel pain, but it may not be that meaningful to them, or they may feel pain a little time, but that may be very meaningful to them. The survey actually turned out to give some very surprising results. So in terms of all cancers, if you really broke it down, we found people that had high distress scores and low distress scores. The whole survey, if you kind of put all the numbers together, gave a rank score somewhere between 0 and 112. And it turned out that anything of 29 or greater was associated with decreased outcomes across all cancers. And this was validated in a tool and uh, a presentation at this past uh, ASCO. Um, in terms of multiple myeloma, we found some very interesting facts. Um, in terms of distress score correlating to outcome, uh, there is a trend towards significance in that those with higher distress scores did have worse outcomes. However, that was not statistically significant. It had a p-value of 0.66. But there were some interesting things that did come out of our study. One was the depression modality. And the way that we approached depression was utilizing something called the PHQ-2, which is basically a a two-question screening for depression and it basically asks about feelings of depression as well as feelings of anhedonia and it turns out that although only 15 percent of patients reported depression 41 percent of patients reported anhedonia which is highly uh, consistent with depression as a larger scale so it's really interesting how patients actually report their symptoms but ultimately what we really gain from this is that patients really give an insight to us in terms of when they're ready to transition towards palliative care when they're ready to tr transition to cessation of chemotherapy and one of the things that we're looking to develop this is how do we best treat our patients and then also how do we benchmark physicians in terms of what the best way to manage patients is globally. End-of-life care discussions can often be very difficult from both a patient standpoint and a provider standpoint and one of the things that this tool allows is kind of a shift in paternalism where the physician sits down and says we're done uh, to more of an autonomy and giving the power back in the hands of the patient for the patient to sit down and give you some insight and to say I'm having these worries about my burden to my family the pain that I'm exhibiting, the financial pressures, or even depression, you know, that tool gives us an inkling that they're ready for that transition. So it really puts the power in the hands of the patient to help guide their you know, global plan of care.